let me tell you what I'm, I'm hoping to do with you guys tonight. That sounds kind of painful. It's not meant to be. Um, but let me share that. OK, so you should see my introductory slide there. What I was going to try and do tonight was to go through about LCC. And then I do have sitting next to me on my right here a little evaluation module for LCC. So I'll show you that working. and I'll show you some pictures of the wiring and, and how I set that up. So that was my goal tonight. I've met most of you guys on the call here before, but uh, just to explain a little bit, Robin Peel, um, I grew up obviously in England, moved to this country about 25 years ago. When I was younger, my first model railroad was in double O gauge. When I moved to this country, I did actually initially start building some models in HON3, um, having found the Rio Grande narrow gauge in Colorado. And when I came up to Seattle, I met a bunch of, you know, the SN3 mafia up here. So I've started building models up here in, in SN3. So this little test module here is in SN3. Now, why I'm looking Looking at LCC, to me, it's part of a journey. I'm about to start building my SN3 layout here, and I want to know what technology to use in it. Building a little test module and exploring LCC, to me, it's just an evaluation. Is this going to be a useful thing for me to actually use or not? So the jury is still open on that one. So that's why we're actually here. So that's a long introduction. I'm sorry if that was too long. Let me try and show you what I intend to try and do tonight. So I want to try and introduce you what are the basics of, you know, what is LCC? You now, how is it different from DC, um, DCC? What is LCC? And ACDC is an Australian band. A little bit about how LCC works. Talk about the modules that make LCC work and how they're connected together. Look, it's just one cable. Talk a little bit about this module I built here and how I set it up and how I did do the wiring and the configuration of it. Just like we configure sound decoders, we have to configure LCC to actually work. Hopefully, with a bit of luck with my iPhone, show you this thing working. It's not that exciting, but at least you can see something moving and lights flashing and things like that. So that's kind of my goal for tonight, to go through an agenda like that. So what is this thing called LCC? In theory, it's a new way to control everything on your layout, except the actual trains. So it's controlling all of accessories, whether it's signaling, block detection, lighting, anything on the layout that isn't a locomotive running, it is an alternate way to actually control that. When what is this thing LCC? layout command control. It's nothing more than a set of standards endorsed by the NMRA. Just like the NMRA endorsed the standards for DCC many, many years ago, is it 25 years or so ago? And that was successful for everybody. In the same way, LCC is a standard of how this should work, and manufacturers can build their own stuff to support this standard if they wish to. One reason for using LCC is on larger layouts, the DCC system is can get overloaded. If you have 20 operators running trains and operating switches and sending other things over the DCC bus. So LCC can leverage more modern technology for communicating. And it uses any technology, but the most common one people have tried right now is this thing called a CAN bus. I can't remember what it stands for, but it was invented by Bosch, the German car component manufacturer. Most modern cars have this technology in them. It's what sends messages from switches and whatever around the vehicle to communicate around it. It works really well. It works in a really noisy electronic environment like a car or maybe like a model railway layout. But what does LCC actually do? Well, it allows these accessories on your layout to communicate with each other. And by accessories, I mean really simple things like a push button on the fascia. When I press that button, what happens? A signal head is also something on your layout and it can show different aspects, different lights, or put the semaphore signal up and down. Switch machines that move a switch to, from normal to reverse. Those are all these accessories that you want to control and actually have some kind of state they want to be in, you know, showing uh, green over red or throwing this switch to the right or throwing this whole switch ladder so I can get into a yard. So all of these things can talk to each other. There is a list of the things that can actually do. And there can be some logic in there, like interlocking logic to make sure you don't do dangerous things. For example, you can't throw a switch if a train is occupying the block that that switch belongs to, so you don't throw the switch underneath the train. That kind of stuff is possible with the logic within here. Now, a cool thing about this, which I kind of like, is you connect these things together and configure them. And the easiest way to configure them is actually with a laptop or using the GMRI software, just like you might use Decoder Pro to configure a DCC decoder. But once it's done, you can remove the computer. It's not needed anymore. The layout will just run on its own without any computer in there. So this module beside me around here, it's LCC. 
I configured it. Right now it's actually hooked up to my laptop so I can show you how that works. But I haven't had my laptop plugged into it for several months and it just remembers all of those settings when I turn it on, it just knows how everything should work. There are other options instead of DCC, of course, you can just wire everything together manually like we've been doing for decades, if not longer than that. Some people use DCC, and some of the DCC manufacturers like Digitrax has Loconet as a way of communicating amongst accessories. Uh, Lens has ExpressNet, which is very popular in Europe, does the same thing. There's the old CMRI, is that the Bruce Chubb thing, I think? CMRI, the Computer Model Railroad Interface, uh, that really is driven by a computer, a Windows computer to make things work, still quite popular. It has cards connected to it that drive the railway. Some of this stuff you can do with Arduinos. Arduinos can control interesting and complex logic to make interesting things happen based upon certain inputs, giving certain outputs, and so on. So there are alternatives, and these are all things that I'm exploring. Fair enough? Let's compare DC, DCC, and LCC together. I wish they didn't have so many Cs in it. It's actually kind of confusing. Um, this is one way I thought about it, right? DC, I think we all know. It's just how we've controlled model railroads for a century. It sends power to a block of track, and all the locomotives in that block respond blindly. So the throttle blindly sells power, and those locomotives see that voltage, and they move. To me, that's somewhat analogous to a dictatorship. And someone says, move, and everybody moves. It's great for simple layouts. And of course, the accessories like throwing switches, setting signals, they are completely separate to that and do whatever you want to that. You can have little simple circuits and solenoid pump motors quite separately to it. For a larger layout, you get to a very a big rat's nest of wires underneath. I was joking now, but it's something that Jules Verne would recognize. It's you know what he wrote about being on the Northwest and stuff back in the 1890s. DCC you know, was a big step forward. You use a power bus that sends commands to locomotives. A command station directs the action and sends commands to locomotives. I liken it to some kind of hierarchical or military command they're giving orders. He shouts, uh, you guys do this, you do that, you do that, you do that, and you all go and do their things. What's great for controlling locomotives on very, very complex layouts? It was claimed it just requires two wires to connect your DCC to the track. Uh-huh, I've not seen that. But here's the caveat, it's old technology. This stuff was designed in the 1990s. You could argue, oh, it, now it's quite mature. Well, I, I guess it is, but it doesn't seem much cheaper for being so mature. So you guess the last one on here is layout command control. It can use any modern networking technology to send its commands around. We seem to have picked on CAN bus as what a lot of our vendors are using now. It could use Wi-Fi, Ethernet. Nodes are the little components on the layout that actually talk to each other on layout. And it's really, in networking terms, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. What it really means is I can say, hey, Alex, you step to the right. Alex would say, um, hey, Ted, would you kind of stand on your head, please? So we all pass little commands to each other and no one else cares, everybody else ignores it. If I said to Alex, stand on your head, Paul Vaughan would probably ignore that command and that's just the way it should be. I don't want to see how you stand on your head. Well, you can if you wish, but please don't. But that's how LCC works. Someone sends a command explicitly addressed for something else to do, and it picks it up and does it. This is for controlling the accessories on the layout. It doesn't yet control locomotives, but people talk about that might be a future extension so it does fully replace DCC. Well, it's not, and that's why I put at the bottom here, these things are complementary. DCC and LCC are meant to complement each other. And it is more modern technology. It's not the most modern. This stuff I mentioned, you know, the Bosch CAN bus that's in the most modern cars. Yeah, that's kind of, I think that was created in the early 2000s. It's not that modern, but it's much higher bandwidth than DCC. And it is an industry standard. So the components to make this work are dirt cheap, tested, they just work. It's not something very specific that DCC is. So hopefully that kind of separated what these things actually are. So what are these things called nodes? You know, it sounds like a fancy computer networking thing or some creepy thing on some fungus that's attacking the world or something. So what are these things called nodes? These are the electronic components that make this whole thing work. This is like an example of a node in LCC. And this thing you're looking at here, uh, they're about the size of a credit card, just a little bit bigger than a credit card. And you can see this thing on, on the screen here. It has over here two network connectors. You're probably all familiar with those in your computer. These things are tiny. And this is an example of one from a manufacturer, in this case, uh, RR Circuits, one of the one of the only manufacturers of working equipment right now, but a pretty good one. And what this node does is you can plug two network cables into it, that, that CAN bus. But this thing can control 16 connections, which can be either inputs or outputs. By inputs or outputs, I mean 
It could be a push button. I connect to an input that will, I press the button. The node says, aha, someone pushed this button. What do I do? It says, I want to throw this switch. More interestingly, it might say, when they push this button, I want to set a route into yard track number seven. And I therefore want to throw all the switches to get to yard track number seven, just by that one press of the button. Likewise, the outputs are things that say, ah, I got this message saying, throw this switch. I am the controller for the servo to throw that switch. I need to respond to that command and throw that switch. Those are the outputs that come out of here. So in a bit more detail, these things called nodes, these little cards, which are tiny, these do two things. They convert the inputs, inputs from maybe these push buttons or um, some block detection that says a train is on a section of track. That would be an input and say, ah, oh, there is a train on block number 23. Those are inputs. And those generate something we call an event that gets broadcast around this network. And anything on that network that thinks that is interesting to me, I should respond to that, will see that little message and respond to it. So that's why I was saying it's like me saying, Alex, make three steps to the right. If there are two Alexes in the room, maybe they'll both respond to it. So you have to be quite specific about how we actually do that. Likewise, things that are waiting to respond, we call them consumers. But they are continually sniffing this network bus for anything that they need to respond to. And when they see it, they'll do it. It could be throw this turnout to the left. They say, ah, oh, I'm the turnout controller. I'm going to throw this turnout to the left and off they go and do it. Now, the interesting thing is multiple consumers can respond to same events. If I say set the route to yard track number seven, there could be a whole bunch of switches that need to throw to set that route. And they're all saying, oh, yard track number seven, that means I need to be set to normal. I need to be set to revert. And so they all listen to that event and set it. So setting up those complex routes, it has to be configured. But once it's done, everything just responds appropriately to those events. So that's what these nodes do. They are I guess the interface, they connect this LCC network to the stuff on your layout. Now, the number of these nodes you can have is theoretically unlimited, and you'll see what this looks like in just a moment. There's no real programming to make this work, and this may be a little bit different from an Arduino, but they don't need any programming, but they do need a very precise configuration. The way we do configure them, just like configuring a DCC decoder is using GMRI, typically on a laptop. So my MacBook, I'm talking from now, will configure these nodes. And by configuring, we, we say, oh, when this input comes in, what do I do? And when I see this event, what should I do? It's just saying how you respond to stuff when it actually happens. But that's a one-time thing, like I said earlier. Once you've done all of that, these little devices, these nodes, remember that configuration. Again, some examples, you know, inputs might be buttons or some kind of block detection device, taking the location of a train or anything else you can think of. So buttons on the fascia, block detection. The outputs could be things um, driving a servo to move, changing LEDs. Uh, I have a few examples on this layout, switching the indication or the aspects on the signal head, or even controlling layout lighting. So nodes and events from them are core to LCC, and you'll see these words, nodes and events. Just remember the nodes are the piece of hardware like this. This is a node. That is what translates the push buttons and stuff to events and ensures that when an event happens and is detected on the network, stuff responds appropriately. So what does this actually look like? So here's a little photograph of the stuff that's sitting next to me on here, some components I got from RR circuits as my test module. By the way, they sell a starter kit that has everything you need to get started, and it wasn't terribly expensive. This big white thing on the, on the right here, this is called a power point. That is connected to a power supply, in this case, uh, 15 volts DC, that powers the whole layout command control um, bus. That's all it does. It injects power into the whole thing. Then you see the big blue Ethernet cable comes this next gray box on here, and that is of this fancy name, LCC Buffer USB. What that means is it just gives me somewhere to plug in a USB cable to connect this whole thing to my laptop. When you've finished configuring it, you can just remove the cable and the whole thing just continues working. And the other two things on here are a couple of nodes. Here is one node here, and here is another node here on the edge of the picture. So this simple network has a couple of nodes on it, and those nodes themselves just connect to the layout. And um, they have these eight pin sockets on them. The easiest way to get into those is to use ribbon cables to connect them. So this one has a ribbon cable on it, and this one dives straight under the little module board here and goes out and actually connects directly to some stuff on the layout. 
other things I can do is connect these ribbon cables. This one over here is connecting to what's called a fan out board. This just takes a ribbon cable and breaks out the connectors to nice little Wago style connectors where I can connect cables. I think this is controlling the LEDs I have to show block occupancy. And a neat little thing this device has that LCC has, it actually can put the resistors on here to limit the current to the LEDs. So it's all neatly encapsulated on here. You can see I've got resistors into here and that's just $5 module here. You can make that all work. I can do it right here and then just take the cables straight to the LEDs under the layout. This final thing here, the one with the little blue and white doohickeys on the top, that is called a BOD8. That's a block occupancy detection device. So this uses current sensing using coils. And um, I'll hold it up on my video feed here. A little coil like this, you pass the DCC feed for each block through there, and it detects the current in there and detects if a train is in that block. That is what can figure out, you can adjust the sensitivity, is there really a train here or not, and then converts that to an input to the LCC system. So that's what the components actually look like. What I wanted to show you is, so what did I do with that? So I have at the top here, a little, a very simple track layout, two parallel tracks with a crossover between them. That's all it actually has on it. Um, it's very, very simple. And down here, I have those modules we just talked about, the PowerPoint, the USB connector here, the two nodes, and my connections to the layout. I also put on here my NCE DCC command station. This whole thing's an exercise in abbreviations, isn't it? But here's my NC command station held on with Velcro. I just put it on here. So if I take this around to demonstrations, I can haul it with me easy without having to connect things up. And there the DCC bus goes down a hole and connects to the layout. So this is just um, a module I built. It's four feet by 18 inches. Of course, it's SN3. I did some basic ground cover. I have some connectors here on the right to bring power into it. Again, I made this simple, two little barrel connectors over here. So I can just plug it in and unplug it really, really easily. By the way, uh, thanks to Russ Segner. I don't know if he's on the call, but Russ built me this module. Many thanks for that. I mentioned we have block detection. The two turnouts and the crossover there, I control by servers, which in turn, those servers are controlled by a thing called an octopus. So I have one of those underneath and my LCC system is connected to that octopus. Then I put in a whole bunch of LEDs and I thought I could make a fancy control panel, but this is a narrow gauge layout. We didn't have fancy control panels. Um, we just had old blokes pulling levers. So instead I embedded LEDs on the layout hidden in bushes, uh, which light up. And if you've got really good eyesight, you can see some of those on here. Um, there's a red one right here. There's a green one right here. There's a red one right here. There's another red one in a bush here and so on. These two are, you can see green and red one here. Uh, my cat has been chewing the bushes, so they're more visible than they should be, but they're kind of disguised, but they're clear, they light up when I run the railway. And it's just to me an indication that yes, the detection is working. In the real world, when I build my railway, I want to do things like that. I want to automate some parts of my railroad when I build it. So, you know, a timetable train can run automatic and the block detection can make that happen with JMRI. So I want that detection to actually work and drive automation. So I can focus on other more interesting things. So that's what this module actually looks like. Let me go on to the next thing and look underneath. Some of you guys are probably much neater than me at doing your wiring. But I did at least label it so I knew what was what. I've labeled what the LEDs are. These are those red block detection coils, B1, B3. You can probably see I leveraged um, internet cables quite a bit. They're really useful for a lot of stuff on layout wiring particularly block detection, so you have four pairs of wires in there, so you can detect four blocks in one ethernet cable. It's just really neat and tidy to do it that way. Here's my frog juicer for the frogs, uh, my octopus that controls the servos. It's really not as complicated as it looks. And by the way, here are my two push buttons I have mounted on the, on the top of the layout. Either one of them will just toggle the crossover on my little layout one way or the other, just press it and it will toggle it. That's actually what's underneath there. I could talk about configuring this thing, but what I might do before I get into that, instead, I want to try and use my iPhone and show you what this stuff actually looks like. So let me turn on the video on my phone. So that should be working now. I spotlighted it for everybody. Here is my little module, if you can see that. Here are those electronics that I was talking about down here that make it all work. Here's the PowerPoint that brings power in. Here is where the USB connection is linked to my laptop. You can see the cable coming up to my Mac over there. And here are the nodes with all the fancy flashing lights lit up, which may not come across very well. And here's my DCC controller on here. 
So the way, no, I can press this little push button here and it will just throw the crossover that I'm sitting on right here. So if I press the push button, a switch is throw. Not the most exciting thing in the world to see, I know that. There's quite a lot happening when I push that button. It's sending a signal through the bus. It's coming through all of these connectors and then it's going out to that um, Tam Valley octopus and throwing the switch. Now, when I run the train, if I see this little um, C21 sitting here, you should be able to see there's a little red LED illuminated down here. That's a block detection working. If I move the train backwards, you can see that the little red LED at the end there has illuminated. That's just a block detection working. It's not, again, not the most exciting thing in the world to see. I just set it up that way so that um, I could actually see things actually happening on the layout. Another little thing in the middle here, you see a green LED. That indicates that the switches are set um, uh, in the normal position. If I throw the switches with the button here, they actually turn to little flashing yellow LEDs next to them. That's all controlled through the LCC network. I just set that up. So, hey, flash that light after I've thrown the switch and get out of there, you little monster. Go, maybe. Flash that switch when I uh, flash that light when I throw the switch. It's just set up that way to actually work when I configured this. So this all works actually as I would expect it to do. It took a little while to actually do the configuration. As a train runs along, the next LED down here uh, will light up down here, right next to me. When it comes into that block, there we go. The LED lights up. The block detection is working. It's all communicating over the LCC network and it just all works. The important thing here is documentation. I set up a spreadsheet that listed on this node, I have certain things connected to it. They do certain things and the cables that run out to the layout are this and the configuration in the LCC network that I want here is this. Behind the scenes here is where you configure that in GMRI where I'm saying here for line nine, which is this line here in the spreadsheet, when this event occurs, blah, 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 I want to change this to be on and active and make that LED light up. There'll be another event that says, no, turn that LED off. So we can configure all of this. And this is a part which I think is still kind of ugly. I think this interface is pretty bad for configuring this. It could be easier. If you're technically savvy, you can make it work. And there's a lot of people out there offering help online and so on. But I think it could be a little bit easier to actually do, and I'm sure it will be. How do I control my LCC stuff on my layout? Well, I have a couple of push buttons on the edge of the layout that control my switches. They're connected directly to the nodes and then control the turnouts. I have block detection that triggers LEDs to light up, and that's probably all I need for a simple narrow gauge layout. If you want to get fancier, you can set up sophisticated interlocking panels or control panels in GMRI like this, that could directly link to your LCC network and give you feedback on here about where the trains are, the signal indications, the orientation of the switches and so on. And that's some, something I'm actually working with right now because I need to do that to make the automation work. So I've been trying to build a really simple panel for this simple layout. It's actually not that hard to do, it's just I'm just still on the learning curve for making it actually happen. Should you explore layout command control? Well, I'm exploring because I found DCC a little old fashioned and almost obsolete. I find most DCC hardware kind of expensive and it has a terrible user interface. I have this NCE system here. I actually really hate it. I find it really clunky to use and it's been very unreliable. There are some exceptions. There's some more modern, many European um, solutions out there from ESU that has modern touch screens. And TCS is actually building a throttle system that actually supports LCC. One of our local guys, John Sushilailoa, is involved in that. I also want to explore automation, so that's why I'm actually doing it. The other question uh, is why bother with this? Why not just use Arduinos? I think they're great, but they are standalone computers have lots of great add-on boards, you know, for example, for controlling servers and so on. They don't really interact with each other out of the box. You have to do things to make that work. And for anything, yeah, they do need a sketch or a small program to be written to make that work. Now that doesn't scare me. It's something I'm quite happy to do. For a lot of people, 
writing a program like that and uploading it to the Arduino is a little daunting. For me, I'm, I want to explore LCC and maybe see how these two things can actually coexist. So that's about it for me. Um, I just want to show you actually what I've done, what I've been playing with, and I've shown you a little bit of the evaluation module. Find this lovely notice here from the London County Council Board of Health, the LCC Board of Health. So I thought it was quite relevant to where we are today as well. So I'm going to stop there. And does this inspire you? Or do you have any questions? I'll be happy to try and answer. And if I can't answer, I'll get Brian Pickering um, down in the South End. He really is an expert on this at a national level. He can help you as well. But any, any questions on this? Would something like this be a good use for an old iPad mini? It's interesting that once you've configured this, it doesn't need anything to control it. Really, all you need to make this work is any computer that will run JMRI to configure it. And I don't think JMRI is functional on iPads. I'm using it on my Mac. But once it's set up, you don't need a computer. Now, whether the computer could be just an input to it, so you can maybe run your control panel on an iPad, for example, or an iPad mini, I actually think you can, and that might be a good use of it. So that just becomes effectively another node or set of nodes on the network. So I think the answer is probably yes. Could you explain the details of the block detection system? I broke this little simple layout here into six blocks three on each of those double tracks on each side. So I fed the DCC for each of those blocks, effectively a subbus through one of these little detection doohickeys. And that was wired directly to that blue and white thing there, the block opiency detection device. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now because I, I don't really need to do that. That's fed directly to that block occupancy detection device. And literally as a train moves across it, you can see the lights flicker on that device. And you can actually see, it's quite pretty, really. You can see lights flicker as it sends that command out across the network. So I can actually maybe even show you that. I'll use my computer, it might be easier. If you can see me, if you can see the layout there. So I move this locomotive over here. Do you see that this little thing, ooh, that little thing over there uh, lit up to two lights? You see over here, there's a couple of green lights over here. Are you seeing that? Uh, and that's a block occupancy actually working, detecting it. So I'm just using those detection coils linked to that device, and that converts the detection into an event going around over the network that I then use to trigger, oh, light up this LED or turn off this LED or whatever it might be. That's a really half fast explanation, Sid, but does that kind of help a little bit? Well, yeah, the question really is, is, is it isolated? It appears that it's isolated from track itself and, and, and the power going through the DCC system. And which is ideal for what I was wanting to use it. And uh, yes, it is isolated. It. It's going through these little coils, right? So it's not actually taking power away from the DCC supply. It's just looping. I actually loop them through here twice to get a better signal. But it's literally just an inductive loop, and it detects it through induction. It detects the current being drawn through it. And that little doohickey there. Right, right, right. Well, the current being drawn through it, meaning that it somehow is connected to the track which is the bus for both the commands. Yes, and uh, the, su the sub bus for that section is looping through this, yeah. Is there any way to make a very small section without really interfering with the rest of the block? Uh, which is, so you, you could do that in many different ways. For example, you, you could put, um, I don't know, uh, read switches or some such under there, so or photo optic detectors under there. You could use anything you want to detect detect that. I just chose to use these, um, in, you know, these current sensors as my way of doing that. Um, so I, want, I would probably want to break the entire railroad into blocks and detect occupancy throughout. If you just had a very specific need, you could use, um, you know, photo, photo detectors in there and use that as that veto technique. Say, hey, I'm not going to throw this switch because I can detect there's a locomotive nearby. Mm -hmm. This is all very much in its infancy right now, Sid. Um, uh, so um, there's a limited amount of uh, modules available in here. There is quite an array of them, from certainly from RR circuits. But basic block detection like this is something they've actually been doing at this company for years before LCC came along, uh, connected to the local net, the DC, the DCC network. Um, but their little board um, will also work to connect their LCC nodes, which is why it's actually kind of neat. They're reusing some of their existing technology to make this work. And I think they, I can't remember if they have boards in this range that they have that do that other kind of detection as well. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't remember. Well, I guess we're not there yet. Not quite, I don't think.
So I think uh, Michael Boyle said, can multiple functions be controlled separately, for example, crossing gates? And yes, absolutely. Um, uh, it's just how you choose to configure it, Michael, uh, to break that up. So, you know, for example, for a crossing gates, it might come back to what Sid was just saying. You do have an optical detector that detects a train uh, on an appropriate track moving in the right direction, and that triggers the sequence to throw the crossing gates. That would be just uh, one input or maybe two inputs driving one output. You know, the input would be triggering that detector of a train moving towards a crossing gate. The output would be you know, trigger whatever that process is to make those crossing gates go down. And when you're clear of the other side, another input comes and says, okay, reverse that and put the barriers up. Totally isolated. And in fact, most layouts would be like that. Many different things happening totally independently of each other and unrelated to each other. That's kind of the goal. This is it, so you have to evaluate a minute called C21 or Z21, as you would oh, say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Written. And that has a CAN bus, that has switch detectors, that has signal detectors. A lot of stuff you talked about there, yep. it seems to be already in, in the system I'm using. I think that's the, that's the ROCO or Fleischmann, yeah. the C21 is ROCO or Fleischmann, isn't it? They're the same ROCO thing now, yes. Yep, yep. Right. So, yeah, that does have that, and it does use CAN bus, but so right. here's, here's, here's a difference. Um, CAN bus is just the communication method. Now, LCC, these products I've got here happen to use CAN bus. It could use anything to communicate. It could use um, could use Wi-Fi, it could use Ethernet, very yeah, reliable it, well, communication. Well, CAN bus is one. I'm, I'm actually running it over yeah. Wi-Fi, so I'm using an iPad to yeah. control my Same idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same idea, you can use Wi-Fi or CAN bus. Right. Uh, they're, just pick, they're just using any transport technology they want in there. By the way, there is a book on... Um, Amazon, I might have shown you guys this before. The, the book is actually quite funny. It's called An Introduction to Layout Command Control. It must be the first edition because he couldn't even spell the first word in the title correctly. And it's full of typos. Uh, and I, I, that's fine. The guy threw this together quickly. Even the back cover has got a bunch of typos in it too. It's got an ex, it's, it's got an exterminable into the future, which I think means extensible. It sounds like something a Dalek would say. But um, it's actually quite useful. Um, it was like very early first edition. It actually helped me understand some basics a little bit. It's a self-published book on Amazon. I can't remember what it cost. It wasn't much, but it's you know, one of those print on demands book on Amazon. So it's kind of a useful little thing. Thank you for your questions. Thanks for participating. I hope it gave you some ideas. I'm not the expert here. Um, I think uh, Brian Pickering here, I think is way more of an expert than me. However, I've enjoyed diving in and it wasn't that hard to get the basics working. I'm now heading down, configuring GMRI and setting up the this track, this stupidly simple track plan in GMRI. So I, I would love, my next step is to make this thing work automatically. So this train shuttles around through the switches and stops and starts again. I want to see if I can do that. That's my next step now. I've got this basic module working by doing all of that detection and switch throwing and so on through, through um, LCC and then in GMRI. So that's my next step.